The compass knee hinge is a device that has been modified from the original compass elbow hinge for the treatment of complex injuries about the knee. Potential indications for use of the hinge include knee dislocations, fracture dislocations, complex tibial plateau fractures in which conventional implants do not provide adequate stability to allow early knee motion, and flexion contractures of the knee that are not responsive to manipulations and arthroscopic lysis of adhesions. A key component of this device is the worm gear and knob that you see pictured. This device allows the surgeon to choose between a free range of motion around the center of rotation of the knee and locking the knee in any position and using the worm gear to force either flexion or extension. The compass hinge allows aggressive rehabilitation and range of motion in the sagittal plane or flexion and extension. It severely limits varus valgus stress or coronal plane motion as well as axial stress or rotation. Because of these features, immediate range of motion rehabilitation can be employed in patients who have sustained severe injuries with less risk of loss of fixation of either the fracture or ligament reconstructions. Before we demonstrate application of the hinge, let's take a quick look at the components of the system. The equipment used in application of the hinge is very similar to what is used with the Elizroff external fixation system. The workhorse of the system is the triple trocar, which is used in placing the shunt's pins. The quick chuck allows easy implantation of the pins. Both straight and right angle screwdrivers are included, as are 10 and 13 millimeter wrenches. 10, 20, and 30 millimeter bolts are used to attach the various sized rancho cubes. One through five hole rancho cubes are included, and centering sleeves plus set screws are the final components to the set. The first step in, is obtaining a good lateral of the knee using fluoroscopy. This is critical and you need to spend enough time to really make sure you get it right. You'll have to adjust both the knee and the fluoro machine to get it exactly into a good lateral. I use the posterior aspect of the femoral uh, condyles and try to line them up to make certain my laterals adequate. We're getting close here but I'm still not quite satisfied so we're going to make some fine adjustments and see if we can't get a perfect lateral. We're off rotationally there but we'll make some adjustments and get it right where we want it. That's getting closer and now we're ready to find the center of rotation of the knee. You find this by drawing a line from the posterior femoral cortex down to where it intersects with Blumensatz line and that is by definition the center of rotation of the knee. That is the point you want to take your reference wire which you see depicted here being held by a coker. You want to put the tip at that center of rotation as defined using the fluoro with that tip right at that point where the posterior cortex intersects Blumensatz line. You then after making certain you've got the tip where you want it begin to tap on the posterior portion of the uh, reference wire to get it in place. So first we're going to make certain that we're satisfied with our position and now we're getting the tip about where I want it. We'll move it uh, anteriorly and posteriorly and carefully check that that tip looks good with a good lateral view. Once I'm satisfied that we have achieved that then I'll start to drop the tail of that wire down trying now to make this reference wire look like a dot rather than a long wire. Here you can see the bottom of it is too low, so I'll raise it up a little. Now it's a little bit too high, so now I need to drop it a little bit. Once I do that, we'll begin to tap it into the, the cortex just to make certain that we're getting it right where we want it. Now we're a little too distal with the tail end of it, so we'll adjust that backwards a little bit. And once we've done that, now we're getting close. Again, this should look like a dot, not like a long uh, wire when we get it just right. Again, we're close here, although not quite where I want it. We'll tap it in a little bit further because we want to eventually get to where we can take the coker off. It'll make the view better. We're still off a little bit here, so we'll make some more final adjustments. As we make those, now you can see we're getting to where it looks almost like a dot. So now we're getting to where we could consider taking that coker off. We make some final fine-tuning adjustments, tap it again, and then check it one last time. I'm very satisfied with that position where the wire looks like a dot, so I will now take the coker off. We recheck it again. 
We're off rotationally here, but we don't have a perfect lateral, so we drop down, and there we've got a good lateral, and the long wire looks like a dot. I'm now ready to drill it across using the pin driver. It's important just to drive it in a straight line across. I don't check any more laterals after doing this. I just carefully drive it across, and then we get an AP view using the fluoro. Once we switch that fluoro up and get the AP, this is our very first AP view. If we've done it right, it should be parallel to the joint with the wire. If it's not, you need to pull it out and start over. Once you're satisfied with that, you need to hang the compass hinge on the reference wire through the uh, two hinges and then center the femoral 5 8 ring uh, with one to two finger breadths between the skin and the side of the, of the ring. I then use Kelly to clamp down and hold it in place. Now I begin to put on the Rancho cubes. I use a one hole cube on the medial side to keep me as far away as possible from uh, Hunter's Canal and the uh, artery. I feel through the skin for the femur and then make an incision using a 10 blade oriented from posterior to anterior uh, and then spread down with a Kelly. Once I've spread real well, this triple trocar is used to pass straight down to the femur and then I use it to feel the femur. Once I feel like I'm in the center of the femur, we remove the center and put a drill bit in place. I now use the tip of the drill bit to carefully feel anterior and posterior on the femur. And once I feel like I'm in the center of the femur, I'll drill until I hit the far cortex. Once I hit the far cortex, I stop and we take a measurement, which is calibrated on the drill bit. I add five millimeters to that measurement for the other cortex and then drill the rest of the way through. A six millimeter femoral chance pin is then selected and it's driven in by hand using the quick chuck that is provided. These generally go in fairly easily and you usually can feel pretty well when you hit the far cortex. After you believe you've got it drilled into the far cortex, uh, the quick chuck is taken off and the remainder of the uh, triple trocar is taken out. Once in a while it can be difficult and you may need to use a Kelly to assist with that. The centering sleeve is then slid over the Schantz pin and uh, onto the one hole Rancho cube with the lines facing toward the head. The set screw is then placed into it and that locks that pin in place. We now repeat the procedure with the three hole Rancho cube on the lateral side. Again, a stab incision through the skin only from posterior to anterior. Make it generous enough that the patient can move and not bind the skin against the pin. Then spread with a Kelly. Take the triple trocar and place it down right to bone. Uh, and once you're on the bone, pull the centering portion of the triple trocar out. The drill bit is then placed in and again we feel the anterior and posterior limits of the femur and center ourselves. It's very important to keep the 5 8 ring perpendicular to the femur while you're placing these two pins and that's what your assistant can help with. Then drill, hit the far cortex, stop, measure, add 5 millimeters just like with the other side and then drill the far cortex. The second 6 millimeter femoral pin is then placed into the remaining uh, sleeves of the triple trocar and then driven in by hand. Again, when you feel the far cortex, take it another turn or two, undo the quick chuck, take the remaining portions of the triple trocar out, and then obtain a centering sleeve. This time I have the uh, line facing straight up because it's easier to place it, and I take my set screw and put it in that top hole and lock it in place. At this point, the two femoral pins are done, and I want to just check them and make sure they're, they're an appropriate length. The top one looks a little bit short, so I'm going to loosen that set screw, drive it in just a little bit more, and then check it again with fluoro. We'd like a couple of threads sticking past the cortex like you see there. Now I'm ready to lock it back in place with the set screw. Once that is all set, then we'll check the other side as well, repeating the procedure. And again, we want to have a couple of threads sticking through. This one looks a little short as well, so we'll loosen it. Take, loosen the set screw, don't take it all the way out. Again, connect the quick chuck, turn it another turn or two, check it with fluoro. Now we've got a couple threads passed. We can take the quick chuck off and tighten the set screw back down. Now the two femoral pins and their Rancho cubes are in the position we want them for the whole case. At this point, if we have other reconstructions that need to be done, we want to take the hinge out of the way for the rest of the case. So we'll back the reference wire out, which is in the way for us to do a reconstruction of the knee, which is what is being done in this patient. 
That wire will be removed and the hinge will be taken to the back table. We then finish our procedure, which in this case is a posterior medial corner reconstruction, and when we've completed that, we'll bring the compass hinge back. So here we're removing the reference wire, and uh, we will then go on to the rest of our case. At the end of the case, you bring the compass hinge back. You've left your two femoral pins and their rancho cubes in place. You can see we've now stapled the skin ch shut from our reconstruction of both corners. We then attach the hinge back through the same holes, which were the posterior holes on both sides, to the rancho cubes. That will return the hinge to the center of rotation of the knee. Once that's done, we're now ready to check the alignment, and if it's good, then move on to the tibial pins put a bump under the knee and then look carefully at the alignment. It looks like we're, we're in a little bit more valgus than the hinge is, so that can be adjusted a little bit by loosening a set screw on the bottom as you see us doing here, and then taking a, a uh, wrench and turning the nut on the side there. It adjusts it a little bit and then tighten the set screw back down. We're now ready to place our three uh, rancho cubes onto the tibial ring. Typically, I put one that's almost straight anterior, another that's four or five holes over medially, and the third one I have as close to 90 degrees off as possible on the anterior lateral side. We uh, take the original one, feel down until it hits bone, dimple the skin, make an incision in the skin, pass the triple trocar down until we hit tibia, and then pull out the center of the triple trocar. We then take the drill bit that is for the tibia. These are different size pins. They're five millimeters, so you have to change drill bits. And drill down from anterior to posterior. When you hit that posterior cortex, stop, measure, add five millimeters, and then drill through the far cortex. Then place that first pin in. And uh, once you've got that all the way in, take the quick chuck off and then pull the centering sleeve off. Meantime, we're attaching our second Rancho Q, which is three hole. It's important that all three of these be different lengths so the pins don't hit in the tibia. We're putting our centering sleeve on the first Rancho Cube and then putting in the set screw, and that one will then be locked in place. Following that, we'll turn our attention to the second one, which is the intermedial one. We're dimpling the skin. We'll make an incision, skin only, and then spread down, make certain that we're uh, to where we can pass the triple trocar down to bone and then put the triple trocar right against the bone. Again, we take the center of the triple trocar out and then take the drill bit and place it in. Make certain you're centered nicely on the tibia and then drill until you hit the far cortex. Again, stop and measure as we're doing here and then drill the far cortex. Once you have done that, take the drill out, obtain the corresponding length of pin and put it in and then put, uh, drill it in by hand using the quick chuck. Again, normally, this is a very simple procedure. When that's done, take the quick chuck off, remove the triple trocar. Again, when it's got blood on it, it may be a little more difficult to pull off, and put on the centering sleeve. When, when you've centered that, you'll be ready to lock it in place with the, with the uh, set screw. Meantime, get your triple trocar, go back to the lateral side, dimple your skin, cut with a 10 blade, and spread down. So you can see the assistants putting the centering sleeve and set screw while we're making the skin incision for the final uh, of the uh, Rancho cubes. We get our triple trocar down, take out the center, and put the drill bit in. Hit the far cortex, stop, measure, add five millimeters, and then drill the far cortex. It's the same process for each of the pins. Once you've done that, go ahead and get your pin, place it in, and drill it in by hand using the quick chuck until you hit uh, that far cortex. You then take it off, remove the triple uh, trocar, and then place the centering sleeve in. We're now ready to check the length of each of our pins. Again, we're looking for a perpendicular view, and we want to see a couple of th threads past the cortex if possible. Loosen the set screws, adjust them, and then tighten the set screws down into what will be their final position. You have to go to a lateral to check the anterior and anterior medial pins. Again, you rotate the leg to get a 90 degree view and you can see that our uh, pin is a little bit short there at the proximal most pin. So we're going to loosen it, put it in another turn or two and check. Now we've got a couple threads passed and that looks much better. Once we get it to where we like it, we uh, retighten the set screw and again that's in its final position. We're now going to check and make sure we're not binding on any of the pins, especially the femoral pins. 
that posterior skin often is binding, as you can see here, as the Kelly's demonstrating, and that will hurt when the patient flexes. So we take the knife and just release a little bit of it posteriorly. If you want to, at the end of the case, you can close a little of the skin anteriorly, but you want to leave a nice loose pin site. We're doing the same thing with the tibial pin here because we felt it was a little bit too tight. Once that's completed, you want to tighten all of the bolts and nuts. Here we have double stacked nuts that we're tightening only the outer ones so that we don't rotate the hinge itself. You then cut off each of the pins. The femoral pins you cut off at the point where they get thicker, like you can see me pointing out there. When that is completed, you've got your hinge placed on the knee. It allows flexion, as you can see here, with good sagittal plane motion, but controls both varus and valgus stress and rotation, protecting the fixation of the fracture or the reconstruction of the ligaments as needed.